Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm delighted that you could join us on this show on Thursday. In the studio, as ever, <laughs> on the Thursday night, we have Alan Ruff and Tam Cowan to talk football. And, of course, there's a big role for Ruffy ahead. Lots to talk about. As ever, there are a, a few legal obligations that we can't discuss with regards to Partick Thistle's Colin Weir takes over. Uh, he's in charge. Ruffy, um, obviously, will be back in some capacity. Ruffy, I know it's sensitive stuff for you, but you are going to be sporting manager, sporting director, manager of the club, <laughs> and uh, on the board at least. Yeah, well, uh, I obviously can't <laughs> comment on any of these things, but they're not true. But I'm so happy for the club. I'm so happy for the supporters. We've got a real guy in charge. The consortium really, really worried me, as it did a lot of supporters. But uh, Colin Weir, right from the start, has put his money there in the club and he will do so. So I think there'll be happy times in the future at the club. Yeah. And as Austin McPhee is showing a sporting director role, that can only really be given to somebody with ridiculously long hair from another era. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Ruffy fits the bill yeah. there. By the way, when you're talking about the legalities, I'm going to have my own lawyer on the case. If in the back of that story, I have one more person emailing me texting me or putting it on social media that they've never seen Tam Cowan and Colin Weir in the same room <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens yeah. when you've got short grey hair, yeah. specs, a belly and a pair of gazongas. <laughs> Right, I wish I had his money. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, Tom, if there was money in a tribute act, you'd be out there. Absolutely, Who cares? there may be. I'll tell you what, if I did have his money as well, as much as uh, I think anybody with money in this day and age, there'd be wise men would say to them, don't go near a football club. But see if he did have the wealth that him and his wife were able to share. I think yeah. it was £161 million. So let's split it right down. Eighty and a half million squiddly diddlies each. Yeah. I would be sorely tempted to march right in there in Motherwell and say, what do you need? What do you want me to do? No, you wouldn't. I would. You? I would. It'd if be great. I won 161 million, I would make sure I had the best fibre broadband that you could get, Ruffy, and then I would just contact you by Skype uh, from, from Barbados. Barbados. I, I, yeah. I'd have my flat in New York and, and then I'd, just, I'd be saying, are you OK? Do you want me to send you a couple of shekels? Yeah. I would take care of you, Ruffy. I'd take care of Tam as well, since we've known each other since oh, I think I was a teenager. You know? Quite like Barbados. I'd be happy. It's a good times from Partick Thistle. For oh, me, it like, is. It's a it fan. Is. They've got the manager in that they wanted. I know the results yeah, haven't yeah. been great so far. And now it seems that they've got the, the fanatic back on board. He's got plenty of cash on the hip and he is going to eventually give the club to the supporters sounds as if it couldn't get any better I don't think it can uh, as I touched on it there I, I didn't want any consortium coming into the club because the majority of consortiums are there for two or three years and then they pass it on to somebody else and it's just a disaster after that they were never going to throw money at the club I don't think Colin will throw it either he's a very very wise smart guy but uh, it'd be great if we could get the team back up and at least the playoffs would be fantastic yeah, <laughs> absolutely um, uh, Colin Weir uh, released a statement on the uh, takeover there. I'm grateful to the majority shareholding group and <clears throat> excuse me, FDL for working with the three black cats to pave the way for the exciting prospect of fan ownership for Thistle. I will ensure that the trust they are placing in me is not misplaced. Thistle forever planted the thought of fan ownership as a real option in my mind. From there... Um, uh, TBC has taken the dream and is turning it into a reality. This is a major financial commitment on my part as fan owners will not need to repay a penny, but I believe this gives fan ownership the best possible start. Today is a great day for a club that means everything to me. I hope that fans get behind this exciting development. Uh, they talk about this all being their club and now 
it really will be. What a fantastic statement that is, and I agree with Ruffy on that. I think good times ahead for Partick Thistle. Uh, let's hope they're back in the Premiership where they belong. So, uh, now, on to a man who's put in some great displays for Celtic and he's hoping uh, that maybe he has a longer term there. Fraser Foster has talked about the fact that he's no contact with Southampton since the loan. He certainly wants to get back in the England squad uh, with some of his performances. And you just never know. When you're happy at, at a club, sometimes you just hope that the, the club that holds your registration are easy to deal with. Yeah, but he's got the old dilemma now, as much as he, he loves it up here in Scotland. Uh, and he's come into a right bit of forum. You saw it with his double save in the European game, how much he enjoyed that. And he's talking about how that really pumped him full of adrenaline and he felt he was back home, blah, blah, blah. But is it going to be the same old, same old story where in terms of getting back into the England squad, they're going to look at him and say, oh, he's back up in the wee jock league, you know, and we'll need to look elsewhere. You know, that, that would be a wee bit unfair um, on Forster. But, um, yeah, but um, I, I think he's a smashing goalie. And, uh, again, I always remember watching that particular <coughs> European game that night, the double heater in a pub in Glasgow. And before he made day two saves, I'll be brutally honest, um, because he added a wobble or two before yeah. that. And there were Celtic fans in the pub saying, oh, did we make the right decision here bringing him back? What's Craig Gordon done so wrong? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but he pulled out two saves like that. It looked absolutely immense. And, you know, if Celtic could hold on to him, that would be sensational. Uh, Ruffy, you're in the goalkeeper's union. Uh, you were no mean goalkeeper in your time. Uh, how do you rate him? Uh, very good, uh, but I was I was like Tam with Craig Gordon. I've always been in Craig Gordon's camp. I don't think there's much between them. Uh, like Tom, I, I think he makes mistakes, uh, but he makes the big save, and that's where uh, Celtic are just now. I think the the biggest problem would be, as you've just touched on it, the fee. Yeah. Uh, do you pay four million for a goalie? Five million for a goalie? And it's a testing point for Celtic, you know, yeah. if and, they and really, again, really want them. Matt, the same way my argument has always been with somebody like uh, Kieran Tierney, I think Celtic did exceptionally well to get £25 million for Tierney because he, he was a defender at Celtic. And you'd actually have to look, I know he's a smashing player and he's done great for Scotland as well, but you'd always have to look and say, how much pressure in Scotland has he actually been under as a defender for Celtic? Mm. And by the same token, if you thought, do we pay four million for a guy like Fraser Foster? And I'll chuck Mother into the mix with us to play against teams like Motherwell and St Johnston, where with the best will in the world, maybe even a reserve goalie would do. So it's four million, a lot of money for getting a guy like him. When you have got, you know, a, a, an excellent, two, two. proven internationalist. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm always in the, I know, but I'm always in the Craig Gordon camp. I don't know what he's done wrong at the club. I'm utterly baffled. Have you got any inside info? No, I think, he was, I, think, I think he was injured, and I think the new manager comes in and just didn't fancy him uh, in in preference to Scott Bain. Suddenly Scott Bain's in there, and then, you know, he gets the <coughs> chance to go and bring someone that he trusted yeah. before in, in Fraser Foster. Uh, Fraser Foster, to be honest with you, Tam, didn't really do anything wrong uh, down at Southampton. You know, you were in a situation there where Fraser Foster had one of the longest shutouts mm. in Southampton's history and in Premier League history, and then suddenly, a new manager comes in, he's just jettisoned out as goalkeeper number two or number three, uh, and then he's out of the England squad, and it's amazing, Ruffy, how your, your whole life can just go bum 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 Yeah, then he was playing that well, he got into the number three in the English squad, you know, so he must have been doing something right, but you're right, once you're out of the limelight, and somebody younger comes along, and he proves that he's as good as you, then you, you have to make a decision and you don't want to be hanging about, you want to be playing and that's what he's getting at Celtic. And I'm sure there's been a wry grin on Fraser Foster's face when he moved up here and then Southampton, of course, lost nine goals in the one game. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Sometimes, uh, you know, keepers, <laughs> you know, they feel for each other, but then, <laughs> but then, no, no then they think, like, can I get back in there? <laughs> uh, anyway, before we start talking about the weekend's Premiership fixtures, we have a competition ongoing at the moment, and if you're a Rangers fan, it's a humdinger. Hi, I'm Barry Ferguson. Don't forget to like, share and follow our social media channels at PLZ Soccer. To win this shirt, all you have to do is guess my favourite Rangers goal. Fairly straightforward stuff. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and then all you need to do is post 
Uh, the goal that you think is Barry Ferguson's favourite goal. There's more than a few have got it right so far. On Facebook, you can do it, and on Twitter as well. Good luck with the competition. I uh, clarify, yeah. uh, as a viewer, yeah. uh, when, I, when I, I saw that this morning, is it ba personally a goal that Barry scored or yeah. just his favourite Rangers goal? It's his, fav it's, it's his, his favourite goal. goal. His goal. His goal that he scored. Right, yes. I think you should make that crystal clear then. Yes. I was a bit confused. My favourite goal. <laughs> well, you must be the only one confused because everybody who's entered the competition has nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> But nevertheless, um, it's Barry's favourite goal that he scored. Uh, so just in case you're in the Motherwell camp where you think, well, I could do with a Rangers top for a for a private function, you never know. Or indeed, uh, you might just fancy Barry Ferguson's top, then get involved in the competition. It's fairly straightforward <laughs> uh, to enter it. Here's a look at the fixtures for the weekend. Uh, and there's some tasty games I'm really looking forward to. It's Celtic Livingston, Hibs against Motherwell, Kilmarnock Hearts. St Mirren against Ross County, Hamilton against Rangers and St Johnston against Aberdeen. So that's what's on offer. Of course, uh, two of those games will stretch into the Sunday. But uh, I'm really looking forward to obviously going through to Easter Road. Uh, Tam, I thought I would nick through there and see Motherwell and how they take on Hibs with a new manager. Yeah, field day for the psychologists again because... Uh, I think up until Hibbs appointed Jack Ross, I'd been looking at Motherwell going there and, and actually just maybe being slight favourites. But again, it's the old thing about the bounce. Uh, and I'm only th hoping the thing that will work maybe against that is the fact that um, Hibbs have already secured uh, a win there when they put a few goals past St Johnston. Um, so it's not as if they're absolutely desperate for this win. It hasn't been coming, hasn't been coming. Bring in the new manager and there's your three points. So um, I'm hoping that might just kind of work in Motherwell's favour. But very interesting just with Jack Ross coming in. But I, mu I must be honest, um, just looking at the bigger picture, St Mirren against Ross County for me is the humdinger of the weekend because I think um, I've got a couple of pals who are uh, good St Mirren fans and I think they know that if they've got any chance of staying up and they're already <coughs> been written off by all the pundits, a lot of whom aren't even talking about Hamilton Ackies this year mm -hmm. for maybe the first year in a long time. Yeah. But they're looking at St Mirren against Ross County. If St Mirren lose that, I think you can get the mortgage on them and back down. Yeah, uh, it's a big one for uh, Jim Goodwin in difficult circumstances coming in there and trying to turn things around. It'll be interesting to see how well they're backed in the January transfer window if they're going to try and get Jim Goodwin uh, away from the bottom of the table, Ruffy. Yeah, I think St Man's the same as anybody down there. Uh, as Tam's <laughs> quite rightly, you've got to beat the teams that are down there, will you? You've got to really put a bit of pressure on everybody else. You can't afford to let a gap appear because generally, nine times out of ten, if you're down there at the beginning of the season, you're going, it's going to be a long, long season. You don't generally dig yourself out of it. So these games against these teams down the bottom are really important. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, let's not forget also St. Johnson against Aberdeen. St. Johnson still in the mire, only a couple of points ahead of uh, St. Mirren at the foot of the table. So that's going to be huge for them as well. Uh, of course, it's tip for tat at the top. Everybody looking at one end of the city and the other and seeing if they can uh, uh, get in front in the league race. This is, of course, Celtic and Rangers. Celtic, they're in goal difference at the moment. They have Livingston at home. That's a wee bit of revenge in the yeah, Rafi, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, you have to say that's a home banker. You know, I know Livingston are particularly good at home. Away from home, you know, it's, it'll be a backs to the wall for them. I, I can't, I really can't see them taking any out of that. The, the young Celtic boys are really on fire just now. They'll be looking forward to every game, come fast and furious. So, so it's a home win for me. Yeah, and, and, and I've got to mention this, Tam. <clears throat> I mean, it's Hamilton against Rangers. Uh, I know you've been <laughs> bogged down with her already. We've been talking about it non-stop. The, the talk of Morelos just won't go away. The papers this morning, uh, you know, the last couple of days it's been St Etienne. Then it's St Etienne saying Rangers have been too greedy. Uh, the underlying issue here is, I don't think, I think Rangers have got to try and get as much as they possibly can, but it's got to be the summer. Exactly. Um, and you're almost speaking like a Rangers fan. I think you are a closet <laughs> teddy bear Peter, because you're right. Any Rangers fans, I speak to taxi drivers, guys in the pub or whatever. They say, as far as this season is concerned, when they need to win the league, looking at the bigger picture with Celtic going for 10 season after next, if they sell Morelis in January, any Rangers fan I've spoken to has said, forget it, that's us. 
So it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> OK, Hamilton against uh, Rangers on the Sunday. So there's lots of interesting ties. One of them, of course, uh, is still waiting on a manager. And it is, of course, Kamarnock against uh, Hearts, Ravi. I just, I just wonder, Daniel Stendhal, former <clears throat> Barnsley manager, has been mentioned in this one. Yeah. <clears throat> is it because suddenly he impressed him in an interview? I just, I just wonder if they're making a, a, a big, big call here on this one. I still can't believe they haven't contacted Mullerwell about Stephen Robinson. Yeah, but I think uh, they have to be seen to, you know, be interviewing as many people as possible for the fa fans' point of view. You don't want to put <clears throat> all your eggs into one basket. It might be the Motherwell manager, but they might go to Motherwell and there might be a stumbling block down the road. So they've got to have other people to be seen to be had chatting to anyway and again we're not privy to what these people are saying in these board meetings and what they're promising but uh, they have to get it right because I'm sure there'll be a right few candidates going for that job now. Yeah I can I can tell you right now um, George Stevenson, Willie Pettigrew, James McFadden and Ali Maxwell those are the four Motherwell legends who will be inducted into our first ever Hall of Fame this Saturday night. Yeah. If Stevie Robinson would like to join that illustrious company, come out on Friday and say that you're staying at Motherwell and uh, you don't want to go to any other club and I'll welcome him up on stage on a Saturday night and give him his gong. It would be magnificent. Yeah. And the longer it goes on, I'm really holding out and hope that we are going to keep him because I think... I, I can't imagine it. The figure £120,000 gets bandied about, right, as maybe a potential stumbling block for Hearts in terms of compensation. If I'm going to sit here and argue that if Stevie went to Tynecastle, he'd go with my blessing because they're a much bigger club, they've got a much bigger support, they've got a much bigger bigger and better stadium. Yeah. I can't then see why £120,000, mm -hmm. which isn't a huge sum in modern football, I can't see why that would be holding them back. So I am thinking and indeed hoping that they are actually looking elsewhere. Yeah, OK, a couple of points before we finish. <coughs> Just out of curiosity, um, Tam, are you filled with optimism about the potential semi-final opponents for Scotland uh, in the run-in there? You, you've got the likes of Bulgaria, Romania are, are in the equation as well. I know, and I keep... Israel. I've, I've read this week, oh, Bulgaria are rotten, and I think, you know... We've played so-called teams in recent past who are supposedly rotten, who have been minnows and all the rest of it, and we've struggled. Um, Israel, of course, we had beaten them not so long ago. Maybe a wee bit of optimism there. I think the best thing for me in terms of having a bright outlook about this playoff is that the game is going to be at Hamden, 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The first game is going to be at Hamden. And finally, the fans will have a, a big game, a competitive game, an important game, a cheer, uh, the boys hopefully a victory too, which means I reckon it will be a full house. So a full house at Hamden, no matter what its detractors say about being far away for the pitch and all the rest of it, I think that could be the thing it tips us at least into the final. Yeah, well, here's hoping anyway. Uh, just a one footnote, of course, uh, uh, Maurizio Pochettino sacked by Tottenham Hotspur. And uh, if the new man in, certainly surprised a few. Jose Mourinho is now the Spurs' new manager and he had some comforty words for the man who paved way for him. Tomorrow is another day and you will find happiness again. You will find uh, a great club again and you will have a great... A great future. Yeah, so nice words from <laughs> nice ones from what Jose. Yeah, Pochettino actually it's is Jose got and Budgie's number for the text. <laughs> well, I'm just about to say to you, Pochettino's eleven to four to take over at Manchester United. The 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 managerial merry go round in England has gone crazy. Yeah, but you can see uh, him. You know, he just sat tight. He sat tight and waited on the the job that he wanted, and he's got it. And that's what these good managers do, because the clubs see their record, their CV. I mean, the title wins all over Europe. You know, you just can't beat that. You just have to get your head round the man, and that's what the Spurs supporters will have to do. Do you think he's uh, going to be someone great for Spurs, delivering silverware? If they give him four hundred million and he buys in the kind of quality <laughs> they will want, probably. Because he's got that CV. Yeah. Are good you a fan, to, Tom? Good luck to Mourinho, though, because he's been out... How long has he been without a club? A year. 
So he's probably starting to struggle financially. Yes. And, yeah, <laughs> getting around his pals in the pub, tapping money and all the rest of it. So, aye, ah, it's good that he's back in there as a working man. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't it great that Tam has a little bit of sympathy for him being out for a year? <laughs> uh, I don't think he was short of a bob or two. Will he be a success at Spurs? It's all open to debate. And what about Manchester United? 11-4 oh, to 4 for Pochettino to take over from Solskjaer. And he's still in the job. Uh, crazy times. Anyway, don't forget, our podcast is out tomorrow. Murdo McLeod was our special guest Tam, Ruffy and myself uh, every week we'll bring you a podcast with special guests uh, sharing their memories of football good bit of banter on it I know lots of people have been very positive about episode one episode two you can get it right across all the uh, major platforms uh, to listen to and if you want to watch it you can do it on our YouTube channel and as you can see across social media like, share, follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can get us on Facebook Live and on Twitter as well. We'd uh, love to hear your thoughts on your favourite team or anything that's bugging you in the game itself. So, with that in mind, Thursday comes to an end. Thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Tam Cowan. Don't forget, hang on because you're about to find out some really good deals on offer uh, from Arnold Clark right after this show. Hello and welcome to the latest from Arnold Clark, where we bring you the best deals from across the country from Europe's largest independent car retailer. Here are just three of the unmissable deals that we've picked out for you this week. First up is this 69 plate Vauxhall Corsa. One of the UK's most popular super minis has had a facelift and this 1.4 litre three-door Griffin model takes things a step further with its stylish sports interior, heated front sports seats, finely tuned sports suspension and 16-inch black twin-spoke alloy wheels. It also comes with the Navi 4.0 IntelliLink 7-inch touchscreen and you can get all that for £10,998 or just £169 a month. But be quick, there's only a limited stock available. If you're looking for incredible value for money in the SUV crossover market, then it's hard to look past the hugely popular Dacia Duster. This 19-plate, 1.3-litre prestige model could be yours for £16,498 or £249 per month. For that, you get a whole host of features new to the Duster, including climate control, curtain airbags, blind spot warning, keyless entry, 17-inch diamond-cut alloy wheels and a 7-inch touchscreen multimedia system with satellite navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Add in remarkably cheap running costs and the overall Dacia package is hard to beat. Finally, here's your chance to own one of the most thrill-seeking rides around and for an unbeatable price. This five-door 19-plate BMW 1 Series 118i M Sport gives you all the handling expertise you'd expect from a BMW, coupled with style and refinement, and all for £17,998 or £269 per month. And this shadow edition also comes with black Dakota leather seats, LED headlights with automatic beam control, 18-inch double-spoke alloy wheels and the outstanding Harman Kardon sound system. For more details on any of the fantastic deals available from Arnold Clark, simply head over to arnoldclark.com deals or get in touch with your nearest Arnold Clark branch. I'll be back next time with more mouth-watering deals, but until then, thanks for watching and happy motoring. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.